This is the Missing Persons Reports, brought to you by Jamaica Chronicles. 42-year-old Samuel Thompson, a painter of Pedro District, St. Catherine, has been missing since Monday, August 28. He is of dark complexion, slim build, and about 6 feet 5 inches tall. Reports from the Spanish Town Police are that Thompson was last seen about 9.30 a.m., wearing a plaid shirt and a pair of blue jeans. The police did not say where he was last seen, but all efforts to contact him have proven futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Samuel Thompson is asked to contact the Spanish Town Police at 876-984-2305-POLICE-119 emergency number or the nearest police station. One biker is singing the praises of the police in St. Elizabeth after gunmen pulled up on him early Tuesday while he was on his way to work and stole his motorcycle injunction. The man, whose identity is being withheld, reported the matter, and the quick action of the police led to the recovery of his motorcycle and the seizure of the car the police believed the men were traveling in when they relieved him of the bike. The two motor vehicles were found at an under-construction property in Pedro Plains, but no arrests were made. Watch as Deputy Superintendent of Police Coleridge Vento detailed the response of the police. This morning at about 5.30 a.m., a gentleman was on his way to work driving his motorbike. An armed man in a silver Toyota Allian drove up, forced him off the bike, and drove away the bike. The matter was reported to the police, and among other things, intelligence led us to this address where both the bike and the motor car suspected of being involved in this incident were recovered. The men that were in the vehicle were not seen. The premises is a uh, building that is undergoing construction. But we continue to appeal to the citizens to report the matters as quick as possible to the police. And I want to say thanks to the cooperation of the citizens who assisted us in the recovery of this matter. And we continue to work with our partners to ensure that we can keep the parish a safe place. As it relates to this incident, we have the detectives here, scenes of crime. The vehicles are being processed, dusting for prints and forensic evidence and the investigation will continue as we proceed along. Yeah, I want to say thanks again to the PJ Plains Police who come and make a quick response on what happened this man was driven along by some gunmen and I'm glad I called by the station and get through, you know, so thanks very much to the police. Respect and thanks again. Alicia King, the 17-year-old girl who was set ablaze after being doused with gasoline while asleep, left Jamaica on Tuesday for Texas, USA, where she will receive medical care. King had been receiving medical care at the University Hospital of the West Indies since the attack on August 24, which was allegedly carried out by her ex-boyfriend. The ex-boyfriend, 18-year-old Antoine Gray, otherwise known as Bad Foul, is now being sought by the police. He is known to frequent Johns Road, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. The law enforcement officers have tried repeatedly to locate him, but their efforts have proven futile. Alisa King is battling for her life. Alisa King were, were at sleep when she were dosed with gasoline and set ablaze. San Marino Foundation was contacted by her parents for help. However, we stand by and allow the doctors here at the university hospital to do their work and wait until it, the moment is right for us to intervene. We received the medical report for her on Saturday and today I am happy to say that Miss King is on her way to Texas. She'll be going for treatment at the Steiners 
Burn Center at Galveston, Texas. We ask the nation for their prayer and we ask everyone to just take a time out and pray for them. At the same time, we ask in each and every one, whenever there's going to be any form of domestic violence, we ask in you to just walk away. That simple little walk away can save your life and it can also save the other person's life. Take into consideration, this is a young girl. She's just 17 years old. And the person who set her ablaze in her sleep is 18 years old. Both of them life is not going to be the same after what happened. So I only can ask my fellow Jamaicans, please, please stop domestic violence right now. Please, I'm asking you. So could you just tell us what was the emotion like out there sending them off? Well, sending her off today and the cry from her stepmom and the priors and thanking us and thanking God. It's a very good feeling, but at the same time it's bitter. It's a bittersweet feeling. You know, but we give thanks again to God. Thanks to everyone who helped us to make this possible. Our sponsors abroad and here in Jamaica. We want to say thank you again. In the wee hours of Sunday morning, nifty thieves made off with one of two vehicles parked in a yard, which the owner thought would be safe behind an automated security gate in the Cassia Park community in St. Andrew. The homeowner told the media on Tuesday that he was alerted by a neighbor about 4 a.m. that the sedan motor car was missing. He said the neighbor told him that two cars were parked at his gate, but at the time nothing untoward was suspected. They are professionals. It was a well-orchestrated plan. It's a team of people. They dismantled the arm of the remote gate to gain access to the premises, he said. The homeowner said the property also has cameras and a big floodlight, which also did nothing to deter the robbers, as they also skillfully tampered with the camera system. The thieves managed to steal the car by jimmying the lock. However, their attempt to steal the sports utility vehicle luckily did not work as the security system installed did not allow it, so they weren't able to get it started. The homeowner said the thieves were very meticulous and they didn't break a window or pivot glass. Everything was neatly done. He said the only evidence that anything was amiss was the key barrel that they dug out. The homeowner said he strongly believes they were canvassing the area and deliberately targeted his home despite the very visible security features. The Cassia Park resident, who spent much of Sunday resecuring his property, said while he is grateful the police were able to retrieve the stolen vehicle, lamented that it still comes with a price as he has to fork out the high wrecker fee from his own pocket. The distraught homeowner is suggesting that the police do more patrols in the area to deter other would-be robbers. This homeowner was not the only victim of these smooth operators, as over a two-week period, according to the operator of a wrecking service, he has been retrieving a number of vehicles that were stolen in the Cassia Park area. He said he has also noticed that the vehicles stolen are both key and button start, and that the robbers do not damage the door or break a glass, but leave them in pristine condition. Greetings, everyone. Greetings, greetings. <clears throat> greetings, everyone. Greetings. As the sun rise up and burst through the sky, good, great, grand rising to everyone out there in the world this morning. When Jesse, you have to just do it, Jesse, don't. 
that we are doing right now, we just say. Yeah, you know, it's a beautiful morning on the island. Amazing. I love my country so much, man. Wherever you are in the world, you know, so your country nice. Rep for your country flag, man. Big up your country. Defend your country. Defend your country culture, your country values, and what it means to be whatever flag you are wave. The proudness that we are wave it with. This morning, I am waving my Jamaican flag through the sky with blood in my eye. Here, blood in my eye from a country now. So, but they tell the items here only if just say, I'm gonna turn on this phone here. So, just say, and this phone here turn on this morning. There are very serious reason this phone turned on this morning. Seeing? First of all, let me just say to every single person, we stop and take a look at that video the other day. And really and truly, like for the first time, get introduced to a queen africa in a real life and what queen africa do in a real life seeing i'm so humbled it overwhelmed with humbleness and we really do give thanks because it wasn't the easiest thing for me to do ever probably the hardest thing me ever do in my life is that video that we released seeing Anyway, this morning is not about nothing to do with that, though. This morning is about the where we are and what I want the item to know a little bit more about me. So, I don't give thanks already for everyone who I see where me I come from and see say I'm a joke. It's not a joke to me. has never been. None of what I've ever done has ever been a joke to me. Something when we take deeply serious. And take even more serious now. See? So again, I just want to say to everyone, you know what I mean? Give thanks for the similarities of how we exist as human beings. We share a lot. Some we talk and some we don't, but we share a lot as people in terms of life experiences. We did always know that, and that is why we have always kept it in the real, to say the least. So, this morning, and really and truly, footer hype, I just want to say to you, my brethren, give thanks for the reasoning that the eye is putting out there. To say, you know, Queen Africa have been around forever doing this. And is, and is even going to be around even a little bit more now. That my energy is kind of like balanced. My, kinda, my energy kind of balance out, you know. So, I'm going to even be that person even more now. So, I just want to say to Futa Hype, say, give thanks for your strength, my brethren. But that is not necessarily the kind of strength I'm needing from the eye. Because mental issues is simply that. The mental issue that I am having is that I am living in a country where my government signed a contract to kill one set of people and leave another set. Okay. And I'm now declaring that that set of people is mostly found in our inner city communities here in Jamaica. Our government that is in power now have set up a Illuminati system of governance on the people of the inner city. Where it's almost as if there is a 
a prison system set up in the inner cities now. So when you guys out there in the world are asking for Jamaican people, they are deliberately being killed behind the scene by our authorities. That's why you can't see them, that's why you can't hear them, and that is why our voices are now going to be even louder for those people here in Jamaica that you guys are wondering where they are. They are here, but they are being scattered up. So what we're asking, the support I want from you, Futa Hype, is not a Queen Africa Day. I want a let's go for Jamaica Day. Let's stand up fully for Jamaica Day. So I want you, Futa Hype, to investigate the Paramount Chief, Richard Curry, and investigate all those organizations that you're batting for and giving voice for. Investigate the PNP government coming in that the country is about to give the reins of, it, of the island to. Investigate more than talking about what Andrew them doing Fly come to Jamaica and come see what happened from the rock youth. You cannot stay on your phone in Florida and analyze everything that's happening down here. You have to be on the rock to overs it. So yes, my brethren, I do give thanks for your support and I give thanks for where you're talking at and I hear you calling out the other female artists and I'm joining you to say to Lady Saw, to say to Spice, to say to Cecile, to say to Tanya Stevens, Marcia Griffiths, Judy Mowat, um, Carleen Davis, Nadine Sutherland, Jada Kingdom Shensia, Chanel Muir, Bl um, Vanessa Bling. The item can put the rest of the names of females who are big and prominent in the country. Our women and children in the inner cities need our voices. Um, and it is not a joke anymore. I went to Pampute. I went to Pampute's, um, what you call it, um, treat. She was, I was invited to the treat before all of this that's happening on the internet with my name now. And so I decided that I would still go. And so I went yesterday. And the inner city is dying, people. I'm talking to the diaspora, those who are in the diaspora. I'm, I, don't, I really don't have any help in terms of the point that I'm trying to push to say that we need an organization that their main focus is going to be on the in shining light on the injustices that is taking place in the parts of Jamaica that is being hidden from you, the parts of Jamaica that you're looking for, the parts of Jamaica that they are now feeding on TikTok and, and, and apps like those. They are, it's, it's a everything that's happening, it's a deliberate rollout against the people of Jamaica because they know the policeman, when I spoke to him last night, he told me that I wanted to start an insurrection in Jamaica and I want to overthrow the government. And it looked like it's the government I want because I went to speak to him to ask him, why are they doing this to the inner city? The youths in the inner city are so angry. They're so mad. It is, and then in the background, they have valiant song, a mad me a mad out, a play in the background so i want to say this this morning to bobsy grange bobsy grange you're deliberately doing what you're doing to the, the women and children of jamaica you are deliberately doing what you're doing to the children of jamaica and i'm calling on you in the name of the almighty god to stop miss bobsy grange Take a look at what you are doing in the inner city to the garrison communities. You, are, you all have set up a distraction for the Jamaican people so that everyone who is on the phone and that is in the diaspora, they are not seeing exactly what's happening on the ground here. So I am asking those in the diaspora that really truly love Jamaica and can fly to come to Jamaica, I would invite you to please, if you can come by yourself or come in our group, 
come down here and find us and let us take you and show you what is happening down here and so that we can come together and form the necessary type of advocacy groups that it is going to take to intercept what the what the opposition and the government is now joined together and doing to Jamaican people in order to create the new Jamaica that they are creating. So, as much as you had authentic people that went to the National Stadium to see Chris Brown the other night, it was a cult event set up to unleash the rest of demons on Jamaica to launch the New World Order officially. I am begging, I'm begging from where I'm sitting. I am, I'm, I'm at my five, for those who have sense and can follow, I'm in 5D dimension. I am totally clear. All the things that have happened to me in my life have now become a memory to me. The one that I shared with you all the other day was a sad memory to me. 